I don't think there's been a time in uh, recent history when comedy has been more important. It's it's a good time right now for stand-up. Today is one of those extra fun shows because we have a returning guest. I, I We spoke a few months ago. I loved every second of it. Fritz Coleman, thank you so much for coming back again today. I am honored to be back. It's so rare to be invited back anywhere, and you're a gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> Last time it was very, very diverse. And because I'm a, a comedy geek and I love live comedy, I really want to dive deep with you this time. So the show is called Unassisted Living. It's taped live at the El Portal Theater, uh, shown on TubiTV.com. Uh, Tubi is a free streaming service. It's like Hulu. It's kind of an advertiser-supported streaming service. There are very few ads at the beginning and the end, but uh, I'm just uh, happy to have it there. We appealed to Tubi uh, by saying that, you know, there are a lot of Netflix and Amazon Prime comedy specials, but very few sort of geared to the demographic that I talk to, which is, as I say, old people and their parents. And... Uh, we, we we thought that it would be fun for boomers and above just talking about the common experiences of aging and having grandchildren and how do we survive the pandemic and all that. And we, we seem to have found an audience where it. it's we're just having a blast. You've mentioned a few times in public notes about how it's fun to go back to a regular comedy routine after the pandemic. What's changed the most, whether it's you on stage or the audience, are there big changes from people watching let's say, Zoom comedy back to live theater shows? That's a great question. Um, I would say a couple of things have changed. Some good, some bad. I think, and I don't know that this has anything to do with the pandemic. It has to do with a cultural divide in America, uh, the, the difference in opinions and how prickly and protective people are about their own opinions. Things have gotten very politically correct. Now, I don't do um, political humor. I don't even do current events humor, really. Uh, and there's a selfish reason for that. First of all, the shelf life of current events material is very short. And second of all, nobody's going to do it better than Bill Maher or Stephen Colbert or Jimmy Kimmel and those guys. And third of all, it's just a time where people are so hypersensitive about Everything. You don't even have to do a punchline about Donald Trump or, or anything related to that. You can just say the word in the setup and, be, ooh, you know, you get it from the audience. So I, I, I want to avoid that. And truthfully, now, the good aspect of what has changed is I don't think there's been a time in uh, recent history when comedy has been more important because there's kind of a malaise there's a sort of a mild national depression. Uh, again, it's the it's the it's the cultural divide, and people are just. Um, it might be a post pandemic PTSD kind of thing. People just want to be taken out of their heads for an hour. So what I do is I get up there and talk about the common experience of getting old and just the common experience of American life for people my age. And if you connect with them and they recognize what you're talking about, and they laugh, it's very cathartic for them. And so for that one hour, hour and 15 minutes, you've taken them out of their heads, you've made them forget that things are not perfect in the world. And I think it's very therapeutic. So from that respect, it's, it's a good time right now for stand-up, but it's also a time when it's kind of fraught with landmines if you're, if you're more current events oriented than I am. Yeah.